Hello, hello, hello. Today we're gonna go through a little scraper that I've built. And what this scraper does is that it will go through a list of URLs. It will go into those websites, um, get all the text and look for emails. And if there are no emails, it will look for a page or a URL on the website that might contain your uh, emails. And then it will scrape that site look for emails, and if it finds them, it will put them in a Google Sheets here. So let's go through it step by step. Uh, for just this example, we built a little startup newspaper and we wanted to automate the process of just reaching out to new startups in Sweden, asking them if they want to um, us to write an article about them with some questions and stuff. But I asked Perplexity to just list 20 startups. It gave not very startup-y companies like Klarna. But just for the sake of it, let's try it with this list. Uh, so that's the list we have chosen here. And the rest is just um, wide column range and no filters. We have a limit of five right now because we don't want to waste actions in this example and then the step uh, after that will be a http request and we will just get the uh, uh, raw html from this url from the column a uh, and after that we are giving this to gpt4o mini because mini is so ex um, cheap right now and it actually does a, quite a good job with things like this where it doesn't like i think chat gpt in general is really bad at writing stuff and like it sounds really unnatural but when it comes to just like filtering out data it's really good so we don't have to have a smarter model for that uh, so what this prompt does is um, that we just tell it that here's a website uh, I want you to structure the information that you see in the following uh, format. And then we have a, an example here of a JSON format. So if it can find a contact and email there, uh, it will go and say contacts true, and then it will um, put the value of that email here. And if it can't find an email, well, then we want it to give us the URL that it things that the email uh, is on. So a contact URL or something like this. So that's what we ask it here. If there is no email address, you can instead look for the uh, contact page and uh, give us that. And then it says contacts false here, and it gives us the value of the URL instead. Uh, and if there are no emails and no contact page, uh, non-existing, not available, and it will go down another route. Uh, I'll just, I'm just telling it here which URL it is on right now. Um, and then I'm feeding it the data from this step. In the beginning, I did the text parser, so you would only get the text version of the website, but uh, it turns out that when, when, say for example, that a contact uh, URL is inside a button, it will just come out as contact and not give us the actual URL. So that's why I needed to give it the raw data uh, of the entire page. And usually it gets it all. But some pages are really long and then it won't work. But I've set it uh, a little filter here to uh, do like an upper limit of how long the text could be. Uh, of uh, 70,000 uh, words uh, or characters uh, or yeah characters uh, and that's the context window of gpt 40 so that's why we we can know that we always uh, stay within the range that it can handle and uh, yeah so that's the prompt and the job here is just to uh, and you'll see because the next step is a router we have three routes. We have the non-existing one. Uh, if it doesn't, uh, if there is no contact page and if there is no email, it will go down this route. 
And what we feed it here is that, all right, if result from this one, if it answers and that answer contains non-existing, then go down this route. And in here, if it says contacts false, this is the uh, version where it can't find an email, but it can find a contact URL that we are going to scrape later. Um, so if the result contains contacts false, then go down this route. And in the, uh, the upper one here is cool. There is contact emails on the first page, jackpot. Let's uh, just write down the emails. And then we're parsing that um, uh, into JSON. Why do we do that? Because um, so we need something to filter. We need, it, we need the AI to say a message and then give the value. And if we would just, we could like skip the, the whole parse JSON thing, but then uh, the whole message, like contacts false, would uh, come inside the like the, um, <laughs> contact information on the Google Sheet. So uh, that's why we can isolate only the email coming out of this. So that, that's this part. So it will give us the response in JSON and we will aggregate that uh, and then we will iterate those values into the Google Sheet. Uh, yeah. And yeah, this part actually, in the beginning I built it because I thought that we could, sometimes there are more than one email on a site. Um, so I thought it would be good if it found more emails that it could just iterate through all of them. But in this example, I've just limited it to one. So don't worry about this one, but it just opens up so you can add more emails in the future. Uh, and then, yeah, uh, if it doesn't um, contain contains email, but it does contain a contact page, then we're going down this route here. Uh, so we're aggregating this parse JSON and we are feeding the answer from the, um, the value from the AI. So the AI says uh, contacts false, but there is a contact page and it gives the URL to that page. We then feed that to this HTTP request here. Uh, and then we are pretty much doing the same here. So we're limiting it to 60,000 uh, characters uh, and we ask it, well, is there an email here? Write the email and if there is no email, just write none available. And then we're pasting the answer here. Yeah, that was all the routes. Let's try it out and see how it works. So I'll press run once and let's go to go through five of these URLs and try to find the contact information to each and every one of them. And let's see if it succeeds. So, so far it hasn't found the contact information on the first page of any one of them. So they're all going down this middle lane and but all of them has a contact url so it's feeding that in here and we're scraping the contact url and hopefully um, it uh, finds the contact information there let's see all right so here is the list that's weird email protected i don't know why uh, this one did not work this one was not available but for the rest of them, it found emails. So hedvig at hedvig.com, uh, investor relations at, oh, you see. So um, yeah, that's how you can build a scraper to go through a bunch of URLs and uh, fetch the contact information for them, uh, which can be helpful sometimes. Of course, you can just build out this flow with if it finds the URL, then you can go uh, 
and uh, write an email for example so let's do this just to show you really quick what you can do and uh, let's feed in the data from the let's just copy the filter from before let's do this whoop Um, so we'll feed in the data from the website and we're saying look at this website um, Okay, so for example, uh, here is a website, write an email in HTML that asks them if they would like to uh, write an article about them. All right, uh, answer only with the email, no, nothing before or after. Okay, and then we can go and add a for example, a Gmail step here, and let's send an email. And I don't know, subject, we could AI generate the subject, but, and to email, we have their contact information at this point, and it's going to be the reply from this step. So here, um, and we could have a filter that only if it's a valid email, like only if the answer uh, includes um, um, yeah, an email and stuff like this, but just to show you. And um, the content will be the response from this step here. And yeah, let's, uh, let's see if that works. <laughs> let's run through it again. And uh, yeah, this will actually send the emails to all of these companies now <laughs> from Alice Labs. But uh, yeah, just for fun. Let's do it. Let's just check, uh, because I think the first email didn't, yeah, this is probably because it, the first email was non-existing, so we need to filter out only the emails that are emails and stuff like this, but you get the point. Uh, this is how you can just build an automatic, uh, let's see the message that would have been sent out. Well, all right, um, yeah, it wrote the title here. Uh, and yeah, dear team, uh, we create, came across your website and I'm reaching out to see if you're interested in an article written about the company and yeah, a little bit about them. So just a tailor-made message for them. And uh, yeah, you'll see how you can use that. Let's remove these parts. You can add them yourself because I'm going to export this blueprint and put it in the description as usual. All right, so that was it for today. Hope you liked it and see you later. Bye-bye.